Hi, this is James Creel, a software developer with Texas A&M University Libraries, and I'll be presenting on our new application, SAGE. Uh, the name SAGE is an imperfect acronym for Solar Aggregation Engine. So uh, here's in brief what I'll be uh, talking about today. Uh, I'm going to blow through an introduction real fast just to provide some context um, about what our digital asset management ecosystem is. Um, the distinction between the discovery and the presentation of content, um, and then an overview of our uh, total workflow from the ingest of content all the way to the patron access. And then we'll get a little bit deeper into um, how the ingest process goes, how we expose that content using uh, Solar and IIIF, uh, the in, in International Image Interoperability Framework, and uh, the complementary, complementary roles that Sage and Spotlight are playing in the ecosystem. So uh, a lot of text on my introductory slide because I want it to go fast and get on with it. Um, but uh, so in traditional, um, you know, library work, uh, we tend to talk about the digital asset management system uh, that curators use to uh, curate and publish content. Um, but as we have a lot of different legacy software to work with, uh, different repositories where often it doesn't make sense to move content from one repository to another, um, it, it becomes clear that uh, it's more proper to talk about a digital asset management ecosystem. Uh, we have a lot of different applications trying to work in concert and it's not always pretty. But uh, what helps us out there is um, common protocols um, and IIIF is an excellent uh, exemplar of that. Um, solar indexes and solar API um, as well. Um, so that kind of helps put things together. Um, now curators from different disciplines and uh, you know, different parts of the institution are going to want different workflows for getting their content into repositories. Uh, and of course, patrons are going to want to approach the content in different ways. Some of them looking to really drill down into specific uh, areas, others looking for, you know, broad searches across um, broad catalogs. And uh, it's always going to be the case that there's not going to be one application that fits all the use cases. So um, that's why we try to talk about ecosystems rather than a single system. Um, so uh, I also want to draw this uh, distinction between presentation versus uh, the discovery of content. So uh, there are, you know, some collections or perhaps, I don't know, sub collections that uh, warrant curation at, at the resource level and construction of, you know, elaborate structures around the, around the items. Um, but uh, if you're dealing with very large sets, that's uh, not feasible and uh, often not desirable. And so what you, what you need in that case is, decent metadata and you need that metadata indexed for uh, efficient, uh, intuitive, rapid searching to find the needle in the haystack. Um, that being said, there's gonna be a lot of resources that um, are gonna fall into both these categories that are gonna be uh, presented in both these different contexts. Um, so our solution, our, our pending solution on the discovery side of things is this new application Sage, the solar aggregation engine. Um, it's going to be a component of our ecosystem that's going to serve to bring together heterogeneous content from all kinds of different sources into um, a particular solar index that's going to be the substrate for discovery. Um, and an additional feature set that we've implemented is a configurable discovery interface for patrons that's going to be um, kind of per performing that, uh, that discovery role in, in, uh, in concert or as a complement to uh, Spotlight as an exhibition interface. So here's uh, an overview of the process. I'm not going to go into uh, particular details here because we're going to visit every part of this in the course of the presentation. Um, but uh, I'll say that the uh, uh, folded corners are um, documents or resources. The uh, rounded corners, those are applications or services. And now the arrows, those are going to be uh, HTTP requests or API calls that are um, either going to, you know, get some data as a response, um, mutate the, the target with some additional data, or both. And, but uh, we kind of see this overview here of, you know, an archive getting into a repository and then being enjoyed by a user at the, at the very end of the, of the workflow. So I'm sure you saw SAF is the first uh, little uh, document there. Uh, that's, um, the simple archive format, it's um, part of our uh, legacy as a DSpace shop. And uh, that's kind of your uh, go-to um, batch import format for DSpace. 
Uh, we also have this um, additional application we're not really presenting today. We've presented it in other venues uh, called Magpie, the metadata assignment GUI providing ingest and export. And Magpie can ingest uh, those SAF archives. And Magpie can also export um, those documents that it ingests to Fedora using PCDM RDF. That's the Portland Common Data Model, which kind of allows you to format your objects with um, hierarchies and uh, sequences of pages, that kind of thing. So uh, here's what um, that looks like at the ingest phase. So we invoke the ingest into Magpie at the command line. We're not actually using the GUI uh, for this use case. Um, and then Magpie will construct the objects in Fedora with um, a bunch of HTTP calls. So in Fedora, uh, the objects are uh, structured as uh, PCDM objects for us. Um, they're gonna have obviously some RDF metadata in um, all the different schemata that the librarians have requested. Um, Fedora is gonna supply us with this REST API that allows us to get at the objects, um, the resources, the metadata. Fedora also um, enables indexing to solar and that can be customized with um, an LD path transform. Uh, linked data path is the language there. The other uh, piece of the puzzle here is our uh, triple IF manifest generator. And so this is another uh, piece of software that will read that RDF out of Fedora. Um, it will create a collection manifest for any container that has PCDM objects. The, the objects themselves are gonna get triple IF presentation manifests. And here's what that looks like at this stage of the game. So uh, Fedora is gonna um, invoke the LD path transform to um, do the uh, mapping of uh, all the RDF metadata to the solar core. Uh, the triple IF manifest generator will get the RDF out of Fedora. It'll do its translation uh, to triple uh, IF JSON and it's gonna write those uh, manifests to its uh, cache, which is a Redis cache. So the next uh, part of it is the um, thing being presented today, Sage, the solar aggregation engine. So uh, Sage will uh, read fields out of a source solar core into its internal metadata store. And Sage has its own configurable metadata schema. Um, Sage can then write its internal metadata to a target solar core. Uh, Sage applies operators uh, during the reading process to enhance, uh, amend, uh, augment uh, the metadata that's coming out of the source. And uh, as I mentioned, um, another feature set is the discovery views. We'll come to that in a, in a bit here. This is what the um, solar index aggregation process looks like. Um, and at the core of it is the job. You run a job to actually move from some sources to some targets. Um, so it can read from any number of uh, source uh, solar cores. We're kind of thinking about Fedora today. Um, those are going to be uh, mapped to Sage's internal metadata by a reader, which is essentially kind of a mapping from uh, you know, the core uh, schema to the Sage internal schema. The operators will be applied to mutate as necessary. The writer uh, will then do a mapping from Sage's internal schema to whatever the schema is of the target core. So um, at this stage of the game, we have a nice uh, solar core that Fedora has written to. We have a nice, uh, you know, triple IF manifest that we can read from. Uh, so Spotlight is equipped to um, actually read that collection manifest and uh, make its list of items. So that's um, something that we do have in production right now. And we have some Spotlight collections that are out there for people to enjoy. Um, Sage is going to, uh, be reading from Fedora's solar index, doing the mappings, and then write to its own uh, solar index. Uh, so then, once Sage has its index written, uh, the patron will be able to uh, come to a Sage discovery view. And uh, to the degree that Sage has been configured to deal with its uh, target solar index, uh, Sage will be able to read that index, provide, you know, um, discovery functionality, search and browse and facet. Um, Sage can also uh, 
look at an object's IIIF manifest and um, improve the um, interaction there, uh, getting things like resource URLs, uh, thumbnails, that sort of thing out of the uh, IIIF manifest. And like I said, it works for other repositories. So um, SAF archives go straight into DSpace and our IIIF manifest generator can also read DSpace RDF uh, through DSpace's RDF web app. So I'm gonna talk now about how you actually set up Sage to do the aggregation and to provide that uh, discovery to patrons. So um, obviously, you know, the, the solar index is what provides that substrate for discovery. Um, and uh, the discovery itself is customized in a few different ways. Uh, there are like specific details for any particular discovery view that you'd like to set, uh, things like a logo, description, general stuff like that. Um, we also, you know, have it set up where you can customize your search fields, um, your uh, facet fields, and the fields that you want to display on the on the uh, on the items, either in the list context or in the full, uh, like the single item view context. So let me come over to the uh, application, if I may. Okay, so we see here um, where we're able to uh, configure Sage's internal metadata schema. Everything is uh, going to be identified by kind of a field uh, identifier. Um, the curator who's coming in here is going to uh, be able to actually look at the uh, gloss as they're going through the interface. Um, of course, you need to uh, um, configure the actual solar cores you're dealing with. Um, some of them are going to be sources from which you read. Others will be destinations to which you write. Uh, the sources from which you read, uh, we allow you to optionally configure it to be either coming from Fedora or coming from a DSpace because that can inform the operators that are gonna you know, mutate the data. Um, that stuff is not really explicit in those source solar cores in often, often cases. So um, a reader then, well, if I come to one of these, uh, you of course pick your source solar core. Uh, the filter is very important because you might not want all the documents coming out of that solar core. You might want only a subset that meet, meet certain criteria for the, for, the, um, for the new target solar core, right? So um, for the mappings, uh, we see like for example here, what I'd grab out of the source solar and then where I wanna put that in Sage's internal metadata schema. So that's how that configuration works. The operators can do lots of different things. I think maybe the most interesting here might be the uh, IIIF manifest. So this is uh, very custom to our shop and it's not gonna be in a source solar core, but we can fabricate it because we know how our, um, you know, our API works, right? So we kind of template some values here. Um, we know the application type, we know the identifier of the object and that allows us to kind of template what that manifest is going to be, and then that's going to be um, available in the target. Uh, the writers, uh, definitely very much the counterpart of the readers. Um, so um, here we, we see the uh, internal metadata, what it's going to be, and then we see what we're going to call it in the uh, target solar, and that's going to be, uh, that'll have to exist in that target solar core. And the jobs, that's where it all gets put together. So um, the, the readers, the operators that operate upon it, and then the writer that's gonna put it in uh, your target solar core. Uh, coming now to the discovery views. Um, supposing you have such a core, well, uh, here's where you kind of set that general stuff. You can give it an icon, uh, you know, a further filtering if you wanna, you know, do a, a very focused dis discovery. Um, and as I, as I alluded to, uh, you kind of are able to pick, uh, what you want for, uh, different facet fields and the, the, uh, widgets we allow are, uh, currently just link and type ahead. So there's some additional work to do there, I think. Um, same story for what you can search on in the search box. 
And then for the results, um, got these uh, check boxes for what you want to display in different contexts. No, no work on a grid view yet, but uh, the list and the um, single item view are certainly in place there. So um, enough, enough management, let's go look at one of these things, shall we? Uh, the Berger Clunan collection of decorated papers. This is gonna be, I think, the first thing to go production with. Um, it's a very carefully curated collection of beautiful decorated papers and yeah, well, that's uh, <laughs> fantastic. But it doesn't really uh, show off the uh, aggregation capabilities at this point. Um, so for that, let's look at this one that we kind of threw together in a hurry just for demonstration purposes. This is certainly not production ready, but it's uh, coming from a lot of different sources. I think if I come to uh, some of the sub subsequent pages here, we'll see some really cool assets. Yeah, this is a great one. Um, the Board of Regents paid a zillion dollars for these maps of Texas. So we hastened to get those up into our, uh, <laughs> into our DSpace instance at the time. Clicking forward some more, um, let's see, yeah. We got some stuff sitting in Fedora here, some maps of London. Um, so it's kind of demonstrating how we're able to aggregate these assets from different sources. So uh, my final thoughts here, um, Spotlight exhibits, uh, they give us uh, this capability to make these uh, you know, special feature pages, these um, nice uh, page designs for um, very carefully curated uh, sub subsets of assets. Discovery views, on the other hand, are for kind of finding that needle in the haystack, going through very, very large sets of information. But again, uh, a lot of resources are gonna find themselves living in, in uh, both regimes. Um, and it behooves us to make linkages between those two places. Um, so, uh, if you're going through a, a beautiful exhibit, you find an object of interest, you might want to be able to, I'm, well, I mean, so if, if, you're, if you're in an exhibit and you find a cool object, you want to be able to go look in the discovery view and see its broader context and all of its neighbors. If you're um, in the discovery view and you find an object of interest and it has been carefully curated, you want to be able to go see that too. Um, in addition to that, uh, almost all these resources are also housed in a, in a repository somewhere. And so, we need to be able to link back to that for, uh, for curators to be able to go uh, kind of find the object where it uh, has its canonical representation. Um, and also for power users who are empowered to, you know, actually interact with the object in the repository setting. Uh, just some links here to uh, some of the uh, exhibits and discovery views we uh, have made. And with that, I'm gonna open up for questions. Thank you, James. We appreciate that. Do we have questions? Well, James, I guess I have an observation um, that maybe Alyssa or um, uh, Alberto could uh, comment on. Um, what really struck me about the work that you all have done is the way that your, um, you know, for institutions that have multiple repositories, right? Uh, multiple sort of uh, digital asset management systems, the um, linking those all together and the ability to sort of search across and to select items from all of those different repos, I think is really, um, is really a, a strong plus for this. And um, uh, I think also des describes the kind of, um, ecosystem that you have at UT Austin, correct, Alyssa? Uh, yes, that's correct. We have a lot of different repositories and legacy systems. Um, was nodding a lot as James was describing uh, <laughs> their ecosystem. Um, and what, so we're actually getting ready to launch our production spotlight site soon. Uh, we've just we're using multiple different import options right now, but it's very manual. 
Um, but Larry Yang is on this call as well, and we were just chatting um, on Slack about what we might be doing in the future. So I don't have anything specific to say about that other than that we're tackling the same problem too, and this is great to see. Great, thank you. Well, again, it's the leveraging of protocols that can bring it all together. Um, Solar API, that's pretty universal in library applications. Triple IF, that's getting there as well. So the route forward is uh, somewhat illuminated. And I think Claire has a question. Yeah, it's, it's actually more of a comment um, and then a question about your internal design and development process. I'm, I'm really impressed that in seeking out to build a, an aggregator like this, y'all had the, the, the kind of um, discovery layer in mind. Um, and that's obviously, you know, obviously we were, we were kind of adding a discovery layer to an existing aggregator when we did Harvard Digital Collection. So I'm just wondering um, if you could speak to, um, to the extent that, that you're comfortable, kind of the, the way in which the project came to be such that folks were, were supportive and invested in that, because I feel like um, it's easy for, for us as, as librarians and library staff and, and developers to think about like, great, yeah, we can build a thing to pull together all the metadata. And then if, like, if you look at our, we, we lived for many years with just like the API calls and you can look through them from library cloud and, and see a bunch of text on the screen um, without having a discovery layer. So was there anything specific about your project planning that, that made that such a priority? Hmm. Well, uh, interestingly, uh, I, I think the aggregation was what was kind of called for by our customers. And we, we developed that in kind of this configurable way. And uh, we made it very, very configurable. And we had kind of a user interface that was already talking to solar. Um, and the discovery layer was uh, almost a bit of an afterthought. It's, we were all making all these uh, calls to solar and uh, allowing users to pick fields and such. And we thought, oh, well, let's just, uh, you know, uh, do a, a read operation and display the results and see what happens. And it, it kind of was a, a, more of a natural evolution. It came, uh, as far as software goes, quickly and easily, we were able to um, make uh, this customizable um, kind of discovery view. And I, uh, I think another aspect of that, though, is the developers were highly motivated. We kind of did a little bit of extra work trying to prototype that discovery view because we were keen to have something that was uh, configurable through a user interface, something that would kind of get us away from having to, you know, edit YAML or XML and having to do server restarts uh, every single time we're going to change um, a view or add a new one. We wanted something where it could be uh, user interface driven. Yeah, congratulations, that's question. really great. Okay, thanks. And Claire, also, it's interesting that you mentioned ecosystem in your presentation as well. Uh, again, we use a great many of the same terms, right? So uh, rather than making everything fit into one system, uh, we, we use Avalon for AV, we use Fedora, we kept our DSpace uh, commitment, we run Pronam for digitized newspapers, they all have solar indexes. The team saw the opportunity now to pull together an aggregation and we could start building collections and exhibits by doing solar searches and it, it just kind of evolved. I, I thought it was, uh, you know, when I saw this thing come together, I thought this is great. Thank you, James. We're just about at time here. Um, yep, I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you, Kathy.